Uh, my mom always functioned using her own logic, and it usually baffled my siblings and I. She did a lot of weird things, but the strangest thing that she used to do is when I was a kid, I was tasked to cut the grass in the yard with a knife. <laughs> my mom was born in Mexico in 1960. She was one of seven children, and her siblings gave her the nickname Borona, which means crumb in Spanish. She was small and got bullied a lot by people in her small town. Her siblings were more willing to get confrontational if they felt disrespected, but my mom stayed passive. In Mexico, she only made it to the fourth grade and went immediately into working. One of her first jobs was working with guitars in a small factory. She was 11 years old. Her hometown of Paracho, Michoacan was well known for their guitars, but she never learned how to play them, nor did she have the desire to. Instead, we were told stories about the assembly process. My mom, I would stare at her hands whenever she told me the process of using sandpaper to smooth out the body of a guitar, gently rubbing her hands in demonstration. Her hands were not dainty at all. Sometimes I looked at her hands and was surprised by the small woman they were attached to. They told the story of how she had worked in factories and hard labor her whole life. I couldn't imagine what it would feel like to be touched by those hands as delicately as she touched those guitars. She's just not that type of parent. As the son of an immigrant, I learned that my family showed love in a very different way. One way that she did that was to have an open door policy for our family to come and stay with us if they ever needed. Growing up, I lived in a rotating cast of cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents who slept in the living room, kitchen, backyard, storage closet, anywhere that you could find a place. All of this in a two-bedroom rental that I lived in with my parents and four siblings. Space in our home was limited, but this did not prevent my mom from adding to the clutter. She spent her free time going to the thrift stores and garage sales so she could buy stuff to sell later. She kept boxes in the yard, the side of the house, all of our closets, and even her van was full of things that she would sell on the weekends. Ironically, even though my mom was a bit of a hoarder, she hated that we had so much stuff. She felt like if we had less things, it would be easier to manage. Using her logic, she decided the best way of dealing with all the clutter was to sell our dishware or to hide our socks. Less things meant less to clean and wash and less to make dirty. You can't have a sink full of dishes if there isn't any dishes. I'd be frustrated trying to get ready for school in the mornings as I was trying to find socks to wear for the day. One time I went to my mom and asked her what happened to all my socks and she said, you and your brother left your stuff all over the place so I threw them out. I didn't even know what to say in response to this. I was in elementary school. It's not like I could buy replacements or do my own laundry. We didn't have a washer at our house. So my solution was to sneak into her room before school and borrow her socks. My mom caught on to this and figured the best course of action was to buy herself more feminine socks in an effort to avoid me taking hers. <laughs> Unfortunately, this was not the deterrent she had hoped for. <laughs> Owning things was complicated in this kind of environment. My mom knew that our possessions could be used for profit if needed. Uh, our home was simply too small to facilitate all of us, and there was no plans to move to a bigger place or to stop housing relatives all the time. So my books, movies, toys had no sentimental value. So she grew up, she grew up with so little that she figured we could survive without a lot. Some things like my VHS of the Power Rangers movie could be given to one of her friend's children, and that's fine because I didn't need it. It was a nice thing to sacrifice for other people and to not complain about it. She valued being useful to people. So the feud with my mom continued as I got older. I just was not like my older sisters who helped her when she needed somebody to be a translator or to fill out paperwork or to talk to authority figures. These are things that she struggled with, but whenever the idea was presented for her to try to learn things on her own, she would just reject it and say that she was not capable of those things. Things like improving her writing, her reading, or even simple tasks like working the TV remote. My mom would just say that she was not smart, that she only made it to the fourth grade, that she didn't speak English, and nothing that we did to try to explain how easy it was to convince her otherwise. She felt limited by what she was able to do because she had been a borona her whole life. And all of that self-doubt and insecurity rubbed off. In third grade, we had a project 
where we drew a picture and a short paragraph to show the progress in our writing for a back to school night. The assignment was pretty straightforward. Most of the other kids drew themselves or families or some kind of hobby they enjoyed. I drew a sad alien and a paragraph about his life on an empty planet. An early sign that I probably needed some help. <laughs> Parents filled the classroom in my elementary school looking at the little exhibit. I pointed out my picture on the wall and my mom noted that my handwriting was not as nice as some of the other children. I was failing as a boy. My mom thought that boys would just naturally know how to do boy things at some point. She saw other men who knew how to build things or work on cars. They were good at negotiating and smooth talking. I was a shy kid. I was turning into a borona because of her. I was getting bullied. I had no self-confidence. I didn't like sports and I wasn't loud or tough. I like to use my imagination. I like to sing and write. So what could we do? We had a backyard with grass and weeds and no real knowledge on how to manage it. We didn't own a lawnmower or a weed whacker. Those are tools that would have been deemed too difficult for my mom to learn how to use. So using her logic and resources, she decided that my brother and I would just cut it with a knife. And we had special backyard knives. <laughs> we had a block in the kitchen with knives that seemed to have no use for my mom. We didn't eat steak. So the steak knives seemed like the perfect tool for cutting grass. My little brother and I would regularly spend time in the backyard with a knife, taking handfuls of weeds, sawing through it, and then stuffing it into a plastic bag. And then when the bags were full, we tossed them into the gray trash cans instead of the green ones. Why? Because the green cans were being used for extra storage. <laughs> or big things that my mom couldn't throw away all at once. So if we had a, something like an old couch that needed to be thrown out, my mom wouldn't think to drive it to the dump or call the city to schedule a pickup for a large item. Instead, she grabbed her tool of choice, a knife, and cut up the couch or Christmas tree or mattress, and then slowly threw away pieces until it was all gone. <laughs> and so the obvious question here would be, why not scissors? <laughs> well, we didn't regularly need scissors, but there was always plenty of knives around, enough that we would usually have a little pile in the, in the yard waiting for use. The scissors we did have were for school, and those couldn't cut through weeds as easily, and if we had scissors laying around, my mom would just sell them. <laughs> it may also seem like this was a punishment, but doing yard work with a knife was a normal chore, like washing our clothes in the bathtub or crushing aluminum cans to sell at the junkyard. Totally normal chores that I assumed everyone did. I try to make the time go by in my imagination, sitting out in the dirt. I'd imagine action scenes like the ones I saw in action movies. Sometimes I would pretend that the knife was an action star fighting through waves of plant enemies. As I got older, I settled into the idea that my mom would I, and I would just never understand each other. I was into philosophy, science, and the arts, things that were not helpful for lawn maintenance. <laughs> One time we were waiting in the car, and I asked her if she ever thought about how crazy it is that we live on a planet in space. I stared at her as I watched her process the question, hoping that maybe I tapped into something. But after a brief, a brief pause, she said, I never think about that. <laughs> and it just seemed so strange because that's all I ever think about. <laughs> Despite some difficulties, my siblings and I always were very close. We would regularly assemble at my mom's house even after all of us had moved out. If any of us were ever visiting, we never knocked on the door or called ahead of time. Her home was open any time that we needed a place to go. We gathered together for the holidays, all crammed in the kitchen, eating dinner, standing around the kitchen counter, being so loud that when we, uh, being so loud that when my mom would complain that we were being too noisy. We did Easter egg hunts in the backyard for all the kids. If any of us had birthdays, it was tradition that we went to my mom's house for pizza and ice cream. Even though my mom could never keep track of the actual birth dates or ages we were turning, she was there, <laughs> napping on the couch as we all yelled over each other. In 2014, my wife and I moved out into our own home, into a two-bedroom down the street from where I grew up. When we, moved, when we moved in, my mother-in-law wanted to give us her old, full-size piano that she had kept in storage for several years. I had been wanting to learn how to play, and the piano would be a great addition to a new home. So we told her we'd take it. 
and she managed to get some arrangements to have it dropped off later that night. When I went out in the morning, I saw this big, ugly piano dumped in our front yard. There were scratches on the cement from where the movers tried to roll it on broken wheels and scratched up the floor. My mother-in-law intended for this to be a gift, but this thing was peeling from the exterior. It was out of tune. It smelled dusty from being stored for so long. It was too heavy for us to get inside our home, so by the time we tried to get it inside, it had rained and got even more ruined. Now it looked like if a piano was a haunted pirate ship. <laughs> we called the local thrift store to see if they could come and take it, but they inspected it and decided that it was too damaged to resell it. And I needed to figure out a way to get rid of this thing. And this is when all the training that my mom taught me growing up <laughs> finally came into play. I pushed it over onto the front lawn of my house and began to break it apart piece by piece. And the rain had weakened it a bit, but this instrument was still very sturdy. Toppling it over did not cause the damage that I was hoping for. <laughs> I began to break, the, break apart the exterior, but once I got inside, I realized how all these parts were connected. If I was going to create small pieces, I was going to have to remove the strings from the hammers and the metal frame. And I don't know what kind of tools are used for breaking apart a piano, so I used a hammer, some pliers, and my old friend, the knife. <laughs> I took some time, but I slowly uh, took the whole thing apart and disposed of the whole thing. I love the idea of taking something that seems way too big and breaking it down a little at a time. When I was young, I felt like a borona. I didn't have a place that I could get confidence and assurance that I could accomplish things. Now as an adult, my favorite thing is to have a lot of hobbies because learning new things feels like the superpower that my mom never knew that she had. She had to work her whole life, didn't have time for imagination. But she did a lot. She was, as cap she was not as incapable as she thought. She grew up a little bit at a time, slowly getting rid of the parts that were holding her back. With the help of her kids, she began to grow and change, and she eventually solved the problem of her yard by getting rid of the grass and putting up artificial turf instead. <laughs> Although she still uses the occasional knife for cutting weeds. Like the piano, my marriage eventually fell away. When my wife and I separated, I saw my mom drive by as I was moving out of the home that we'd lived in for four years. She called out to me and saw that I had tears in my eyes. And my mom has never been great with words, but in that moment, she let me know that she was there for me and that her home was open whenever I needed it.